Hi, Martin, the AKM project guy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This will be a YouTube channel dedicated to me doing something that I really love to do, and that is to make art. Uh, probably in the areas of painting, sculpting, drawing, that sort of thing. Um, for my first sculpture build, I decided I'm going to make a two-scale King Tut burial mass sculpture. And uh, primarily we're going to be using uh, insulation foam, partly because I had a sheet left over from a real estate project I was working on, so I might as well do something with it. Um, and we're going to call this one the King Tut Sculpture Build, uh, maybe, well, no, I, mean, I, I guess it should be the King Tut Project. All right, let's get started. Okay, the foam comes in four by eight sheets, and I picked this up at a Home Depot, I believe. And on one side, as you can see, they have writing, and then on the other side, it's, it's no writing. This is the side that I wanted to be showing um, when we make the sculpture. So it'll all be one mono color. Um, this is a sculpture I made some time ago. This is using uh, when I did this, I used clay and uh, then I had a cast and silicon bronze here. And uh, in my military travels, I actually did have a chance to go see the actual exhibit there in Cairo. And I made another one of these subsequent to that where I used a foam backing uh, as a base and then I layered clay on top of it. And um, and when I did that, I drew out using basic, uh, as you can see, uh, drafting tools. I made drawings of that and I was able to save it in my computer. So now I'm going to use this, uh, those drawings, just to blow it up to scale and make it as close as we can to the original. So having done that, I found the dimensions online and I took my drawing, I blew it up to where it's basically um, four sheets. And the width across, I believe the real sculpture is like 15 inches or something like that. So I'm gonna blow it up to scale and I'm gonna use those drawings as a pattern to see if we can cut this out. Now, as far as the my plan of attack, so to speak, is I'm going to make it in three major parts. And the first will be the base. The second part will be the back part of the headdress. We'll exclude the facial front, and then we'll make this part separately. And then the third piece will be the actual face area. And all the ancillary things such as the beard and the snake and and the buzzard will add later, um, including the hieroglyphs if possible. I have a plan for that, but I'm not really sure how this foam, I, I haven't really worked with foam to this extent. Um, so we'll see, this is kind of my first attempt at this. So what I'm thinking of doing is um, cutting strips like this and then put the detail on this and then actually glue it onto the, the base that we make. Um, but we'll see. Okay, so this is our base drawing that I'm gonna use to um, help build the sculpture. I extrapolated the bottom portion here down here and, and then I projected it to the side to get an idea of what it would look like. And um, I just based the shape on the photos of the uh, actual mask. Uh, then I blew that up and I have that here and I'm gonna use it as a pattern to cut these um, panels out in the foam. Um, so it's gonna require 10 of these all together. So I have five, I gotta make uh, five more and that should cover the width of the uh, front of the sculpture okay so I took the pattern I blew it up here cut it out and I'm using it to make additional uh, panels that we're going to stack up so I'm going to cut this out using my um, hot foam cutter and I've been doing that, and so now I have 
nine. So this would be the 10th one. And that'll give us the 15 inches or so we need across the face of the sculpture. So uh, let me finish cutting this out. So we have all the cutouts completed and it's starting to take shape. Before I glue it together, there is a, uh, some small adjustments that I have to make. And let me explain that to you. So on this cutout, this inner circle, obviously, I mean, this inner arc here, obviously represents this arc inside the sculpture. And then the back part here, the back edge or the leading edge, represents this part of the sculpture and also the front here. So that because of this slight curvature, if I start hacking away, now had I made these all full panels like this, it wouldn't be a problem. But because these other panels are relatively thin, if I start hacking away to get that curvature, these are gonna get, the, the edge here is gonna get very thin. So what I'm gonna do is make uh, some minor adjustments. We'll move these over like so, so that when I cut away, we can hopefully maintain a certain amount of thickness here. Okay, so with all the panels together, we have our basic shape is starting to be seen and the little uh, relief that I have, um, we need to smooth that out. Okay, so I've removed uh, additional foam and I got a little better shape going, but oh, and I've added some reference lines, as you can see, this is where the back of the headdress, and these aren't etched in stone, so to speak, but they're just guidelines for me. And likewise, I have the um, base of the neck. So this is roughly where the base of the neck should meet the uh, breastplate. So you start working on this upper portion. I have to settle what I'm going to do with the tails of the headdress that come down here. And so what I've done is I've made a printout of my drawing and I blew it up to scale. So this, is going to go here like so and I'm going to use this as a template to cut out the space and to find where the neck actually is. Okay so what I've done is I've made a, a cutout so what I need to do is get the tails on and to find that I took my cutout and I put reference marks and I line it up along the center line here. I put reference marks so I know where the corners of the cutout should go and that lines up and then I traced around it to get this shape here and now I'm about to do the other side. As you can see, I've begun to <coughs> cut into the foam um, as I'm trying to define where things are going to sit. So I have my, my neck thing cut out here and this is where the tails are gonna come down. Um, but up here, it's still uncertain how this is all gonna play out. So I think what the best thing to do is to go ahead and make the pieces and fit them in, make them larger than necessary and then shape them down uh, in the hopes of matching what's going on here on the uh, sculpture. Okay, so I use my pattern here to cut deeper into the foam so we know where that upper headdress will come in and rest um, into the base down here. And I also, I've taken the 
my larger pattern and I traced it onto a panel as you can see here and this of course is going to represent this part of the sculpture and I left an inch overlap to where they join together so that I can glue this onto the surface of this here. I'll show you what I mean in a minute, but I've decided to make this upper portion all one piece. So basically this whole back part here and then the, the, the tail, so to speak, will actually um, be all one piece. The tricky part will be to get this to line up. Um, so I have to cut into the surface here to get this to sit in there firmly and for this to match up with that line there. Uh, I do not want to go any thinner than this, just for sturdiness. I don't want to cut the back of this part off. So I have to cut this so that this can sit in there and then subsequently I can line that up. So I'm working on the extended portion of the headdress uh, that comes down in the front. And so basically I just took pieces of foam and um, uh, glued them together so that we can cover the distance that we need to. And I took my cut out and I placed it over and drew an outline. And so I will be cutting this out. And this is actually the left side. So I already have the right side up in place. The best way I could figure out how to merge these two pieces down here with the upper piece is to do it by cutting it at an angle. Now that would give me the, the greatest surface area for gluing and obviously the more glue, the more surface area, the stronger it will be. So that's what I'm doing. And so this I've cut and I'm going to cut both pieces at an angle to get the desired look that I want, which would be this angle here where the two pieces join. So I've already cut this. I don't want to cut this any more than what I have uh, done. So the next part will be to cut these upper portions here. So this is the line where they should merge that should be fairly accurate. Uh, but what I'm going to do is now cut this back at an angle to match this here. So both of them are, will be cut slightly at an angle and hopefully we can get those two pieces to join together and look good. What I've come up with is that, let me show you, is this side piece here is not a, it's not perfectly vertical. It looks like it has a slight angle going back maybe of three or four degrees um, and so I want to duplicate that here so that it will probably be tilt back something like that. Um, now with that in place, all we have to do is get these to marry up. Okay, as you can see, I've managed to work on getting this upper piece, which obviously the face will be attached here. And we had to get that to join up with the lower portion of the headdress. Um, and so I went ahead and cut and pretty much finalized it. Uh, still make some minor adjustments. I have not glued it yet, but I knew going into this, this would probably be the toughest thing to do is to, to get that inner face um, to work right. For now, it looks good. And now I'm going to start working on the face portion or perhaps the back. I don't know. I think the face portion should be next.